mean, none of it's easy. I mean, uh, the last two weeks against Indiana, the uh, backup quarterback came in and got a 70-some yard run. We had a missed tackle and lost leverage on that one. Uh, it had nothing to do with the scheme or fundamental. I mean, the fundamental was the missed tackle. Uh, last week, it was just a quarterback had like 150 yards on quarterback scrambles, you know, drop back pass, uh, nothing there, and he'd pull off and run. He has some speed, and we got to do a better job of containing a quarterback and being in rush lanes and making sure that uh, in coverage that we have some guys with his own eyes to, that can come back and help play the quarterback if he starts to take off. What was your memory of the Penn State game last year and, and ending on a defensive play? Oh, it was a great game, great atmosphere, hard-fought game on both sides uh, for both teams. Um, we, ju we jumped out to a good lead, 17-0, felt like we were controlling the game. Next thing you know, it's a 17-all game and it's overtime. Um, but uh, I thought it was a really a great game for us to go uh, into an environment like that as a football team, win that game uh, the way we did. I thought it helped springboard us to a good season as the season went on. But it was a really hard-fought game with two good teams. You guys were such so good at eliminating big plays last year, I think, except for the Cincinnati game. That might have been the aberration last year. Do you feel like it's alarming this year, or do you feel like it's just maybe some, you know, like Bill said earlier, maybe some broken plays, some fluke plays, or are you concerned about it? No, uh, no, not con there's nothing that's happened to us uh, so far this year that's uh, not correctable. Um, again, against Indiana, uh, the quarterback got out for 70 yards. Uh, you know, again, we, we missed a tackle. We had guys there, we missed a tackle, and a guy was he outran us. He was fast. Uh, this uh, past week, the quarterback scrambled a lot. Um, they put in a new quarterback. Uh, we had a pretty good. Uh, we thought we had an idea of who might be the quarterback, but uh, they put in some new plays uh, to feature the quarterback run game that we hadn't necessarily uh, been ready for or seen on film out of them. So that caught us off guard a little bit. But it wasn't even that. It was the quarterback scrambles when he dropped back pass to pass, and there was nothing there. He just pulled it down and ran. Those are the things that, that got us uh, this past week. So um, it's disappointing. It makes you sick. Uh, you know, statistically, it looks bad, but uh, it's nothing that's not correctable. And the long pass was that just broken coverage? Maybe some. Mis uh, no, there. there's no miscommunication, no broken coverage. They had a, a fast guy at the number two uh, uh, position. We were playing a, a certain technique and uh, thought we'd get help in the middle. And uh, play action pass kind of sucked uh, Tybus Powell up a little bit, and he was uh, more aggressive than uh, probably wanted him to be, and um, uh, hit the post down the middle. Depth at nickel is that a concern right now? And just can you go through this? Um, your depth situation at the nickel back position? Uh, yeah, depth at all positions is a concern right now, not just at the nickel position. We've got some young players that we've got to continue to develop and improve at all positions, uh, at nickel, at DB, uh, at, at linebacker, D-line, so we can rotate more guys in there as, as the season goes on. But uh, yeah, right now with uh, uh, Eric Smith potentially being out, uh, we, we've got uh, concern at nickel. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore has done an outstanding job the last couple weeks. He continues to get better and, and uh, is our starting nickel. But we have contingency plans if something were to happen. Uh, you know, we've got different packages that we can go to and uh, feature different guys. So we'll be okay. But just add, being a nickel team right now, that uh, is a little concerned with our depth. Hey, Chris. Uh, I think two of the three true freshmen that have played this year, defensive backs. Last year, y'all played. Damon Webb and Eric Smith and the year before Von Bell played as a true freshman. Uh, can you just speak to the long-term value of you know, getting guys in right away and what it provides for you all in the long run? Yeah, I think any time a, a player comes into the program and he's ready to contribute uh, and you can get him out there, even if it's just on special teams, it uh, adds value for uh, the future uh, seasons for that guy, future snaps. Uh, you look at a guy like Gary on Conley who played primarily special teams last year, played a little bit at corner, but most of his experience was at uh, uh, special teams. It just gave him confidence as he went into this offseason and into this season. Eric Smith, Malik Hooker, a couple DBs right now, that are getting a lot of reps, not necessarily true freshmen, but they're younger guys that are getting the majority of their reps on special teams. It's going to add you know, confidence to them um, and their, their uh, belief and their ability to go out and play winning football uh, for future years down the road. Eli Apple was the young guy at corner last year. Now he's the veteran. Um, yeah. How was he adapted to that transition? How's he played this year? Oh, I think he's played great. Uh, he's had a couple penalties, you know, that you'd like to take back, but he's played aggressive. He's playing with confidence. Love the way he comes to work every single day. He's not getting a lot of action, depending on teams. Some teams just flat out stay away from him. To be honest with you, when you watch the film, you can see that's what they're doing, and, and that's good. As long as um, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to be mentioned at corner to be having a good day. As long as your name's not mentioned for the wrong things, and you're doing okay. And the as a leader? Yeah, he's doing a great job. Uh, just uh, Tybus, uh, Vaughn Bell, um, Eli, and Gary Ann Conley are all guys that have been around here for a number of years now. Uh, they understand the expectations. They believe in what we're doing and, and uh, how we do it. And they're providing tremendous leadership for the other guys uh, in the secondary.
Chris, Chris I can't <clears throat> count how many of your guys have said that the goal is to get better and better every week so that they can peak at the right time. Mm -hmm. How are they doing from that aspect? Uh, everything that we ask them to do, they do. They show up every day wanting to get better. They want to work the process uh, of preparation that we have, and that's really the focus. It's not on the outcome of the game. It's about the preparation, and our guys believe in that, and the way they come in and study film, the way they come in and practice, take care of their bodies, take care of their minds. Uh, they do everything we ask them to do, so they're doing a great job of that. Chris, you guys showed that, that look with Joey and Adolphus in the middle of the line and Sam and Taekwon on the edges, I think on third down against Maryland. Joey said that was something new for this week. Um, I guess in, in the name of wanting to get the 11 best players on the field, is that a look that could possibly be used in other down and distances, maybe not necessarily passing situations? Uh, possibly, but not necessarily. I mean, some of the things that we do in, on third down are you a little unique and different. You're not uh, counting on them to run the football, so you may not be uh, as sound in the run, but you're trying to get after the quarterback and affect the quarterback. So some of the things that we do like that are, are specific to third downs and wouldn't necessarily do on first or second down. And I guess along that, those lines, I know defensive line is not necessarily your area, but just as an observer of the way Joey plays, I think he's known for the way he gets after the quarterback. How would you assess him as, as a guy who gets after it in the run game? Uh, I mean, he gets after it in both the run game and the pass game. And uh, whether he shows up on the statistics with uh, having sacks or tackles, um, it, it, you know, he's affecting the game because an offense has to account for where he's at. Uh, he's getting a lot of uh, slide protection. Our offenses are sliding their, their protection to him, where he's not getting a one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of times they're trying to uh, chip him with a back or a, a tight end in, in protection also, or uh, trying to um, you know down block him from a, a guy on the outside on certain things. So uh, he's making an offense work uh, to do things slightly different to um, eliminate him from the game. So he may not show up on the stats all the time with a lot of tackles or sacks, but he's changing the game because of it. Is there any he's better on the inside? Is it, is it maybe easier at all for him to get to the quarterback when he's lined up inside? Uh, no, it just depends on the team. You mentioned Eric Smith is banged up. Um, could he play this week? Is it anything serious, Chris? Uh, I, d I don't know yet. I mean, he was banged up uh, at the end of the game. And uh, just like anything with injuries, we'll know more tomorrow. Gotcha. Chris, y'all started rolling Vaughn up a little bit, taking on the slot guy. It looked like at Indiana and things. He talked about that. Is that something that will continue, think, through this season? Or is that was that an emergency kind of thing? Or No, it wasn't an emergency thing, emergency thing at all. Vaughn yeah. is, is a, an unbelievable coverage safety. Yeah. And Vaughn can play man-to-man. -man. Vaughn can play slot. He could go plus, press or receiver if we wanted him to. And uh, we do what we need to do each week to try to take away what an offense does best. And if that's to roll him up and play man on the slot, we will. If it's uh, to keep him back and play some zone, uh, we will. But with him, we have the flexibility to do either. I was going to say, it gives you flexibility in that nickel kind of Situation, right? I mean, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Christian Heck Heckenberg would never be uh, mistaken for Perry Hills. <laughs> yeah. You know, from a running yeah. standpoint, how do you correct kind of what's kind of happened the last two weeks, but last week especially, but then move on to Penn? Do you, how much time do you spend, I guess, correcting something that probably? <laughs> you won't see this week. You well, you, you, you've got to go through and you look at a couple of things when something like that happens. One, uh, is there schematic issues that you've got to get fixed? Yeah. Is there mental understanding of what you need to get done by individuals and, and you've got to get it fixed? Well, or was there, it? Were or, there, were there, uh, uh, there's a combination of all that. Or yeah. was it just a, a, a an individual that made an unbelievable play? Yeah. Because that happens too when they're on scholarship. And there's a combination of all three of those things that we've got to make sure that as we move forward, one, that we, we've got a, scout, a sound scheme, the players understand what we expect them to do each call and um, you know we negate to try to negate or limit to big plays by an exceptional player and are you concerned as you sit here right now what's your main concern about this defense as you head into the second half of the season you know the last two like we you pointed out I mean the, the rushing yards have kind of come from Strange sources. Yeah, well, they come from the quarterback. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. look at the stats, the tailback. We've done a great job of stopping the tailbacks in, in the run game. We've got to do a better job. And the, in the, the Indiana one has nothing to do with it. We missed a tackle, yeah. you know, and we lost leverage. Is that acceptable? Absolutely not, because that's what we base ourselves on our, our ability to tackle and leverage the ball. And, and, and it got out on us last week. It was more about just dropping back and the quarterback scrambling as much as anything else. Indiana's was a designed quarterback run. Uh, but moving forward, our defense is based on effort, execution, and fundamentals. And as long as we can see those three things showing up on film, then we keep moving forward. If one of those three things is missing, we got to stop, press pause, and we got to find out why. When it comes to the unique third down looks you kind of show opposing offenses, how has that kind of developed throughout your career? And 
you know, how do you kind of come up with some of these looks? Well, I mean, it, it, it's all about getting to the quarterback, and one of the ways you get to the quarterback is trying to create confusion for an offensive line and, and the quarterback on the different looks that he's going to see. Uh, so, you know, we, we have consistent things that we do, and each week we'll, we'll pop in some new things to try to create a little bit of confusion, uh, put different players in different uh, spots that we want to feature, and uh, attack protections, too. If we, we get a beat on how uh, offenses are protecting the quarterback that we can take advantage of, then uh, we want to try to do that on defense. Hey, Chris, as far as Hackenberg goes, I think the book on him is that he's maybe even better than his numbers indicate that he is. When you look at him on film, I guess, what do you see in him? I, I see a, a, a very confident quarterback, a guy that can throw the, can really make all the throws, short throws, uh, down the field throws. He can throw the field uh, out to the field, down the down the field with big shot plays. I mean, he's, he's got a strong arm. When you look at his numbers, uh, is it necessarily uh, because of the quarterback? They've, uh, for whatever reason, had a number of drops uh, also. Uh, so it may uh, not look uh, favorable for the quarterback stats, but I mean, he's making some really good throws. He's making some really good deep throws, short throws, and uh, for whatever reason, every now and then uh, a ball may be dropped by a receiver or a tight end or something like that. That's not necessarily the quarterback's fault because you know he's throwing pretty good balls.